Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I beg to move that a bill entitled an act to repeal and replace the Arbitration Act, Chapter 5, Number 1, to provide a modern legal framework to facilitate domestic and international trade and commerce by encouraging the use of arbitration as a means of resolving disputes and for related matters be now read a second time. Mr. President, I consider myself privileged to stand here today to pilot the Arbitration Bill 2023. This bill is of great importance to Trinidad and Tobago. It can breathe new life into our commercial climate and attract business, international business, and promote the ease of doing business in our jurisdiction. With this bill, Mr. President, the aim is to introduce a legal framework which facilitates the use of arbitration as a means of resolving disputes. Provision is made in this bill for both domestic and international arbitration. Undoubtedly, updating our current legislation will largely benefit trade and commerce in Trinidad and Tobago by signaling to the local and the international community that we have met the gold standard, the international benchmark in this area. Mr. President, this bill seeks to introduce Trinidad and Tobago's arbitration legislation by modernizing the legislation to incorporate the internationally accepted model, that is to say, the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, UNCITRAL, to use the acronym, the UNCITRAL Model Law on, Inter on Arbitration, as adopted on June 21st, 1985, and amended on July 7th, 2006. The bill not only complies with the UNCITRAL Model Law, but it also closely follows the Impact Justice Model Arbitration Bill 2022. This harmonization with the regional and internationally accepted standards for arbitration will encourage increased trade and commerce in our Twin Island Republic. The question arises relevantly, Mr. President, as we engage in this discussion today, what is arbitration? Arbitration, Mr. President, refers to a method of alternative dispute resolution which facilitates the resolution of disputes which are submitted to an arbitrator or arbitrators for a binding and enforceable determination of the dispute which has arisen between the parties. By the arbitration process, importantly, the parties to that dispute consent to an arbitration agreement as part of their commercial engagement with each other with the intention of not going to court. Rather, it is a consensual alternative agreed by the parties in preference to engaging in time-consuming and expensive litigation in the national courts. Arbitration is therefore facilitated by A, the consent of the parties, B, the selection of arbitrators by the parties, C, the procedure being neutral, D, the procedure being private and confidential, E, and, and F, the finality of the decision of an arbitrator. Arbitration, Mr. President, has increasingly become the preferred method of resolving disputes worldwide as opposed to engaging in litigation. The process is recognized as an attractive alternative to litigation for the following reasons. The parties enjoy a faster resolution to their disputes as the process is simplified. A, re a reduced resolution time results in lower costs associated with determining the dispute. The arbitration process is itself more flexible in that it allows for the parties to agree on all aspects of the procedure. Arbitration allows for the parties to select a person or panel whose expertise is directly relevant to the specific dispute. The parties can rely on the finality of the award since a court's intervention is limited. 
Arbitration is usually conducted in private as a confidential process, allowing for confidential information such as trade secrets to be kept private while the dispute is engaged and in due course resolved. There are international arbitration rules that parties can agree to beforehand. In promoting this bill today before this Honorable Senate, Mr. President, I say with confidence that Trinidad and Tobago has the competence to become a seat of arbitration since there are capable persons who can sit as arbitrators in this country. As at the 1st of June, 2023, the chair of the Trinidad and Tobago chapter of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, CIARB, confirms that the chapter has 80 members, which include associates, members, and fellows who can function within the arbitration process that will be enabled once this bill passes into law. Mr. President, this country's arbitration legislation currently is governed by the Arbitration Act. Chapter 5, number 1, which was enacted in 1939 and last amended in 1997. The 1939 Act is itself based on earlier English arbitration legislation, namely the UK Arbitration Acts of 1889 and 1934. The 1939 Act Chapter 5, number 1 of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. President, is antiquated and does not get past the front door of modern alternative dispute resolution aimed at embedding the ease of doing business for this country's commercial life. I do not think, with respect, Mr. President, that I need to persuade this august chamber that Trinidad and Tobago should not remain embedded in a 1939 legislative mechanism for doing business in 2023. The United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, UNCITAL, is the internationally accepted model for arbitration legislation, Mr. President. It is the gold standard. UNCITRAL was itself established in 1966 by United Nations General Assembly resolution and the General Assembly recognized that disparities in national laws governing international trade created obstacles to the flow of trade, and it regarded the Commission as the vehicle by which the United Nations could play a more active role in reducing or removing those obstacles. The General Assembly gave the Commission the general mandate to further the progressive harmonization and unification of the law of international trade. This, the Commission has since become the core legal body of the United Nations system in the field of international trade law. That law, the UNCITRAL model law, was developed to harmonize arbitration and to address the inadequacies and disparities in national laws on arbitration and has come to represent the internationally accepted legislative standard. As been pointed by UNCITRAL, in an increasingly economically interdependent world, the importance of an improved legal framework for the facilitation of international trade and investment is widely and universally acknowledged. The model law covers all stages of the arbitral award process, from the arbitration agreement to the recognition and enforcement of the arbitral award. To date, Mr. President, Legislation based on or influenced heavily by the UNCITRAL model law has been adopted in 87 states in a total of 120 jurisdictions. Such jurisdictions include, among others, Australia, Barbados, the British Virgin Islands, Canada, Hong Kong, India, Jamaica, Malaysia, Singapore, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. UNCITRAL is the established body that assists, harmonizes, and unifies jurisdictions that promote arbitration since 1966. Such assistance also includes the publication of arbitration rules. I am able today, Mr. President, to assure this Senate that my office extended an invitation to the UNCITRAL Secretariat to consider the very bill presently before this Senate as according with the UNCITRAL model law. And by letter dated the 6th of June, 
2023, the UNCITRAL Secretariat commented on the actual bill presently before us and advised, with your leave, Mr. President, quote, we are very pleased to see that one of the objectives of the bill, Clause 5, is to adopt the UNCITRAL model law on international commercial arbitration, which has been adopted by a number of jurisdictions to achieve harmonization. Having conducted a review of the bill, we can confirm that the bill is indeed in line with the model law and, if enacted as such, Trinidad and Tobago could appear among the list of jurisdictions that have adopted the model law. Unquote. The reference there to Trinidad and Tobago appearing among the list of jurisdictions, Mr. President, is because when once this bill passes into law, there is a schedule to the UNCITRAL model law that is constantly updated, and Trinidad and Tobago will become the listed 121st jurisdiction which has adopted this model law. Impact Justice, Mr. President, is a CARICOM Regional Civil Society Justice Sector Reform Project funded by the Government of Canada. The project goal of Impact Justice is to strengthen legal frameworks, to improve legal professionalism and the sharing of legal information, and to facilitate increased knowledge and use of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms in CARICOM member states. This arbitration bill also closely follows the Impact Justice Model Arbitration Bill 2022. As provided at the explanatory memorandum to that bill, that bill states itself as the model law proposed by Impact Justice in order to modernize and harmonize the arbitration laws in the Caribbean region and is based for the most part on the UNCITRAL model law. Mr. President, by the passage of this arbitration bill 2023 into law, Trinidad and Tobago is better positioning itself to, among other things, negotiate contracts, including international contracts, to attract business, including international business, at a regional level to have increased ease of doing business within the Caribbean and to help build capacity in the region for arbitrators and the profession. With the passage of this bill then, located as we are in the gateway between Europe and the Americans, Americas, and as we build out our already strong commercial links to Guyana and our other CARICOM neighbors, Trinidad and Tobago will be sending a very strong signal that we continue to be a center for commercial international business. Arbitration is used in a plethora of areas, such as the energy sector, in the construction industry, sport, telecommunications, and in land disputes, to name only a few. An immediate and well-known example, FIDIC, the International Federation of Consulting Engineers, is the global representative body for national associations of consulting engineers. In contracts, all contracts, for construction projects, the FIDIC rules provide standard clauses for arbitration. It will therefore be possible in the FIDIC rules that can be introduced into construction contracts in this country that Trinidad and Tobago, with the passage of this legislation, will not only be signaling that it is consistent with the international gold standard, but can have its companies insert clauses into those contracts for the seat of arbitration arising out of any dispute in a FIDIC context to be right here in Trinidad and Tobago. The recognition that Trinidad is UNCITRAL compliant, therefore, paves the way for the international community and the government of Trinidad and Tobago, the commercial community and the government of Trinidad and Tobago to identify this country as a seat of arbitration in negotiating our commercial contracts, since arbitration being conducted in Trinidad and Tobago to resolve commercial disputes will be capable of being promoted as a viable option right here. Mr. President, this bill, the Arbitration Bill 2023, has been informed by, among other things, a policy that was, in, that was prepared by the Law Reform Commission of the Office of the Attorney General and Ministry of Affairs. It was also extensively informed by a process of consultation with stakeholders on this bill, an important part of the process engaged in by my office. A draft bill was first produced in 2019, 
and stakeholders were invited to submit comments on it. The comments as submitted by stakeholders were considered by the Office of the Chief Parliamentary Council, and a new draft from the 2019 draft was produced in 2021 and continued to evolve. The bill was further reviewed, inclusive of the consideration of the comparative arbitra arbitration legislation out of Jamaica, Barbados, and the British Virgin Islands following the Model Impact Justice Arbitration Law. The revised bill was then submitted for further review by stakeholders, Mr. President, in August 2021, and comments were received from those and comments received from those who responded have been considered. Those who were reached out to include the Trinidad and Tobago Chapter of Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, the Association of Trinidad and Tobago Insurance Companies, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, <coughs> excuse me, the Judiciary of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce, Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Financial Intelligence Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, the Law Association of Trinidad and Tobago, the Registrar General's Department, Trinidad and Tobago Contractors Association, and the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. What are the benefits, Mr. President, which will accrue from this new legislation? We've already touched on some of them. A modern arb arbitration regime will signal to the international community that we are a jurisdiction that is well suited for international trade, business, and foreign investment with increased ease of doing business with our, within our jurisdiction. An updated Arbitration Act will herald the requisite recognition that disputes can be resolved through a modern, efficient, and internationally recognized arbitration procedure that can be utilized in respect of transnational contracts. There will be savings for our local court system, since arbitration will bring the significant benefit that resolving commercial disputes through arbitration allows the High Court in its commercial jurisdiction to concentrate on other commercial disputes and therefore saves the time and resources available to the local courts. This is particularly relevant where a commercial dispute may not be ideally suited for adjudication on account of the scale, complexity, and unfamiliarity of an issue within our jurisdiction. Foreign international companies considering whether to invest or do business in Trinidad and Tobago will be more inclined to do so if there is modern legislation that facilitates arbitration to the same standard as the UNCITRAL model law. Further, it will be attractive to foreign investors, Mr. President, and companies if there is a mechanism to settle disputes through arbitration rather than expensive time-consuming litigation in the courts in Trinidad and Tobago. Local companies are also increasingly turning towards arbitration, given the advantages over litigation where time and cost are concerned. A modern arbitration act therefore benefits our local international stakeholders who conduct business within Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. President, has the potential to become as a result a center for international arbitration. For some time now, Mr. President, there have been a lot of com there has been a lot of competition among an increasing number of jurisdictions to be chosen as the seat for the arbitration of disputes. Regionally, in 2015, Jamaica established the Jamaican International Arbitration Center Limited and has been lobbying the international arbitration community as a viable arbitration center in the Caribbean. Likewise, the British Virgin Islands International Arbitration Center was launched in 2017. A modern arbitration act will undoubtedly aid in position in Trinidad and Tobago as a preferred place for international arbitration. <clears throat> the bill signals that as a nation we are suited to conducting international arbitration and will allow foreign representatives to appear before a court or the arbitral tribunal and to have rights of audience. Furthermore, and we will see when we get to examine the bill, there are provisions for tax exemptions and for, on fees charged and expenses incurred by any arbitrator or foreign representative in an, an international arbitrator, which lasts for a continuous period of 30 days or less so that expedition is encouraged in a period of 365 days in any annual period. 
Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. President, as I have said before, and it cannot be emphasized too much, is in a unique geographic location, being a Caribbean island in the gateway from North and Latin America to Europe. Flowing from this, there can be significant derivative economic benefits provided we attract parties from Central, Latin America, South America, and North America to settle their arbitral disputes in Trinidad and Tobago when they are contracting with us. Should this bill be brought into law, there would therefore be an opportunity for the development of that arbitration center. Indeed, Mr. President, the Port of Spain International Waterfront Center was originally intended as a beacon for international investors. There is a publication that I could come to, but I won't trouble you, August 26, 2021, in which the Right Honorable late Prime Minister Patrick Manning spoke to that international waterfront center becoming the beacon for international trade and commerce. That is the vision which we are now given reality to by the passage of this, legis this bill into legislation. Mr. President, it will speak to the diversification of our economy, coupled with the need to earn more foreign exchange, as well as to arrest the flight of foreign exchange. In this regard, it is ever more important to attract foreign investment from different sectors. Arbitration matters are currently being sent to other jurisdictions, such as New York, the United States of America, and the United Kingdom. The designation of Trinidad and Tobago as an arbitration center once this bill passes into law will contribute to the earning of foreign exchange when we establish ourselves as a preferred option for arbitration through, one, attracting Caribbean-based disputes from countries such as Guyana and other CARICOM nations, attracting South and Latin American-based disputes and identification as a training center for arbitration. Mr. President, I could speak at length, but I will turn at this stage to look at the bill for the purpose of assisting members of this Honorable Senate to understand the significance of the legislation that we are seeking to ask this Senate to bring into effect as the law of Trinidad and Tobago. The bill is in 10 parts. Part one of the bill, Mr. President, most importantly, at clause five speaks to the objects of the bill. And it is quite clear from the objects of the bill, everything that I have already been speaking to, and you will recall that it was that clause which the UNCITRAL Secretariat in their letter of the 6th of June paid particular attention to. So when we look at clause five of the bill, the objects of this act are to A, facilitate domestic and international trade and commerce by encouraging the use of arbitration as a method of resolving disputes. B, to facilitate and obtain the fair and speedy resolution of disputes by arbitration without unnecessary delay or expense. C, to facilitate the use of arbitration agreements in domestic and international matters. D, to facilitate the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. And E, and this was pointed to by the Secretariat, to adopt the UNCITRAL model law. We will see, for example, Mr. President, in part one, that the act and one would not find this in the 1939 legislation, the Act in its definition section defines what we now understand to be data message and electronic communication. So data message is defined in this bill as information generated, sent, received, or stored by electronic, magnetic, optical, or similar means, including electronic data exchange, EDI, electronic mail, telegram, telex, or telecopy. That is just one example, Mr. President, why I have said that I do not consider that I need to persuade this Honorable Senate that we should decline to pass this bill into law and remain embedded in the 1939 legislation, which presently is the law that obtains in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. President, part two of the act, and may I pause before I go to part two, may I just spend a little time on clause nine of eight and nine of the act, clauses eight and nine. In matters governed by this court, 
by this act, a court shall not intervene except as provided in this act. And section nine tells us the functions referred to in sections 14 and a number of sections are given shall be performed by the court. May I just, we will look at it when we go through the act in detail, but may I just speak to the significance of these two sections. The significance of these two sections, Mr. President, is to give effect to the UNCITRAL model law that essentially allows the parties by consent to determine among themselves that they will have recourse to arbitration for the speedy, confidential, expert resolution of their disputes and to the extent that they can do so save as is otherwise expressly provided by this act. And the expressly provided is articulate and clear. Section eight, a court shall not intervene except as provided in this act. And the intention behind that, which speaks to the intent of the UNCITRAL model law is to give contracting parties the confidence that by having chosen and having opted for a process of commercial arbitration in the arbitration framework that this piece of legislation is setting up, the disputes will not get mired in the lengthy, expensive, protracted process that now obtains so unfortunately in the Supreme Court of this country. So what this bill is speaking to in its vision and its declaration to the international community is the expeditious resolution of commercial disputes so that parties can with confidence know that they will not only be able to resolve their disputes within a an expeditious period of time, but can get on with doing business with each other within that short space of time when once the dispute has been resolved at arbitration. And that is the significance of sections eight and nine, among others, in this legislation that we are asking the Senate today to pass. If we look at part Two of the bill, Mr. President, part two deals with the arbitration agreement. And we see that clause 10 defines the form of the arbitration agreement. And again, there are some significant passages in here that tell us that we couldn't possibly even imagine accomplishing this in the 1939 time warp that Arbitration Act chapter five, number one, has us caught in. So we will see not only that an arbitration agreement, and I am at clause 10, speaks to the fact that it must be in writing, but we will see that, as an example, at clause 10.4, the requirement that an arbitration agreement be in writing is met by an electronic communication which contains the terms of the arbitration agreement if the information contained therein is accessible so as to be usable for subsequent reference. And throughout this bill, you will see that it recognizes that the reality in which we live, trade, engage in commerce today is propelled and developed through the medium of electronic communication and therefore the legislation recognizes that contracts can be formed by an exchange of emails in no time at all provided according to normal contract law the terms of those contracts are sufficiently clear so as to be enforceable. So without dwelling on duly, I emphasize the modern concept that this legislation, this bill, is asking the Senate to embrace so as to put Trinidad and Tobago on a platform from which it can attract significant international commerce and business. Mr. President, part three of the bill speaks to the composition of the arbitral tribunal. And you see that clause 13 tells us immediately and this is the core of what arbitration is about. The parties are free to determine the number of arbitrators. So it is the parties to the contract who in the first instance 
are going to choose those persons who will enable them to resolve disputes which may arise in the currency of the performance of the contract so that they will go in the area of energy, in the area of telecommunications, in other highly specialized areas, they will be able to select by agreement one or more arbitrators who are specialized and skilled in the area of the contract so as to be able effectively to give justice to a fair determination of the dispute which has arisen. And clause Part 3, Clause 10, Clause 13, goes on to tell us that if the parties fail to be able to pick the, con the, the to choose the arbitrators, that is one of the limited instances, and you see at Clause 14, in which one might go to the court to ask the court to appoint an arbitrator if the parties are unable to agree. So it is not that the court has been entirely excluded, but the function and rule of the court is limited to allow primacy to the agreement of the contracting parties, not only to contract, but to resolve the disputes which may or may not arise. And that goes very significantly, Mr. President, to the composition of the, of the arbitrators. We will see at clause 14 of the bill that there is explicit inclusion that a person shall not be precluded by reason of his nationality from acting as an arbitrator. So the significance there is that international business coming to do business in Trinidad and Tobago will have the confidence of knowing that they can approach the other party to the dispute to say, let us bring in someone from outside of Trinidad who has a degree of specialization in this area in which our dispute has arisen so that we are confident that the dispute will not only be expeditiously resolved, but resolved by someone who has the specialized competence in the area of our dispute. And the prime examples are telecommunications, intellectual property, energy contracts, where you require a level of expertise. You will see clauses 14 to 18, Mr. President, appoint, uh, allowing for a procedure for grounds of challenge of an arbitrator on the basis of justifiable doubts as to his or her impartiality or independence or qualifications, and the procedure for such a challenge are set out at clauses 15 and, 70, and 16. Clause 17 addresses the circumstances where there is failure of the arbitrator to perform his functions or fails to act without delay. Clause 18 addresses the appointment of a substitute arbitrator. And clauses 19 through 20 deal with recommendations, a situation in which there is the possibility of an umpire who will be chosen to assist in the resolution process where, I read from paragraph 19, where the parties have agreed there is to be an umpire, they are free to agree as to what the functions of the umpire are to be. Part four of the bill before this Senate, Mr. President, speaks to the jurisdiction of the arbitral panel, the arbitral tribunal, and the jurisdiction there, it is emphasized at Clause 21 that an arbitral tribunal may rule on its own jurisdiction, including any objections with respect to the existence or validity of the arbitration agreement. And there are provisions in this bill, Mr. President, which speak again to the issue of expedition, even where there may be disputes that arise where the arbitral panel is being asked to ascertain whether it has proper jurisdiction, the process continues in the interim. And that speaks to one of the areas that became quite pervasive in the commercial litigation. I recall when I was in private practice and Chief Justice de Labastide was Chief Justice of this country, the area known as collateral attacks, it became quite prevalent in the civil courts. Whenever a dispute arose, an interim dispute, to bring 
side wins into court to get the court to determine dispute A or B and to delay the final determination of the actual dispute that went to the high courts. And I recall Chief Justice de Labastide was very keen to produce rules that would eliminate and judgments that would eliminate those collateral attacks. Well, built in to this jurisdiction of the arbitral tribunal in the bill that we are asking the Senate to pass are safeguards against collateral attacks because even if you bring challenges while the arbitral um, panel is sitting, you are the arbitral panel continues to sit to adjudicate and eventually will in due course determine the side challenge that has been brought without impeding the process of the tribunal getting on with its work. Mr. President, the clause five deals with interim measures and preliminary orders. And that is an important part of the interim protection that can be afforded to parties whilst the tribunal is adjudicating on the dispute. So that clause 22 says, unless otherwise agreed by the parties, an arbitral channel may at the request of a party grant interim measures. And there is detailed provision made for interim measures and preliminary orders to be made by the arbitral panel whilst the dispute is ongoing to provide for protection with adequate security being provided by the party who is asking for interim measures so as to ensure that the process is not abused. Mr. President, clauses 22 through to 32 of the bill deal with those interim measures and preliminary orders and are quite detailed to protect the parties from any interim damage that may occur while the disputes are engaging the attention of the arbitrator and are comparable and even improved on the processes that have been developed by the common law in our civil courts to ensure that throughout the arbitral process, parties are adequately protected and are confident to ensure at the end of the arbitral process that they have got due process and the protection of the law. When we go to part six, Mr. President, conduct of arbitral proceedings, we see that equal treatment is accorded to the parties, clause 33. Clause 34 allows the parties to agree on the procedure that they will employ in the manner in which the, the tribunal conducts its business. Clause 35 allows in today's world, not I dare say, in the world of 1939, for virtual hearings to be conducted in arbitration so that parties can, one party to the contract can remain in London and be assured of the fact that in the seat of arbitration taking place in Trinidad and Tobago, that party is getting a fair hearing. Clause 39.1 allows for the parties to agree on the language to be used in arbitration proceedings because we recognize that in the international world in which we live, not everyone speaks the same language so that the parties can make agreement for the language in which the arbitral tribunal will engage the fair adjudication of the dispute. Part seven of the Bill allows for the making of awards and the termination of proceedings. Some notable features, clause 46, the arbitral tribunal is to decide a dispute in accordance with rules chosen by the parties as applicable to the substance of the dispute or the law of the state with which the subject matter of the proceedings is most closely connected. Clause 47, any decision of the arbitral tribunal where there is more than one arbitrator is to be made by a majority of all of its members. Clause 49, there is provision for the form and content of the award to be in writing and signed by the arbitrator or majority of arbitrators. Clause 50, 
every written agreement is to be deemed to include a provision that the costs of the arbitration shall be in the discretion of the arbitral tribunal. And at clause 51, it is provided that the arbitral tribunal has the power to award interest. Attorney General, you have five more minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We see clause part eight, recourse against the award, takes us to clause 55, and I would emphasize with reference to clause 55, the number of circumstances in which the parties are allowed to ask the court, this is where the court is allowed an interventionist rule, the number of instances in which, and I look now at clause 55, recourse to a court against an award may be made only by an application for setting aside in accordance with subsections two and three. And that subsections two and three set out the circumstances in which the award may be set aside. Mr. President, part nine deals with recognition and enforcement of awards. And then we go finally to clause 10. In the totality and the complete overview of this bill, which is before the House, Mr. President, I would like to emphasize that the urgent implementation of a modern arbitration regime is required consistent with the UNCITRAL model law if Trinidad and Tobago is to get in line and stay in line with the growing trend of in favor of the resolution of commercial and other disputes by non-judicial mechanisms. It is vital that the modern arbitration laws of Trinidad and Tobago are enacted if we are to be considered a place that is good for international trade and business and for attracting foreign investment. Mr. President, as I wind up, I look forward to the invaluable contributions of honorable senators on this bill and in the circumstances. I beg to move. Thank you. Honorable senators, before I put the question, permit me to welcome uh, the students of the Rio Claro East Secondary School that are joining us today in the public gallery. <laughs> Honorable Senators, I shall now propose the question for debate. The question is...